Now, from WKCF TV 18 and WCPX Channel 6, this is the 10 o'clock news. Tonight, one of the strongest storms to ever hit Florida. Hurricane Opal punishes the panhandle, and we have complete coverage. Four hours after landfall, the storm still packs a lot of strength. We'll update you on what's next for Opal. And National Guard troops from Central Florida plan a key role in the relief effort. We'll tell you how they are preparing for the worst. Good evening, I'm Bud Hedinger. We're glad you're with us. Hurricane Opal is still causing serious trouble tonight, four hours after crossing the Florida coast. The storm brought wind gusts up to 144 miles per hour in Pensacola. One death is reported so far, a Crestview woman killed in a tornado spawned from the hurricane. And a tornado watch is in effect for Central Florida until 1 a.m. We have reporters in the panhandle tonight to show us what it is like in the midst of this strong storm. So let's begin our complete coverage now with 10 o'clock news reporter Ed Trosky live in Bluntstown, just northeast of Panama City. Ed? Well, Bud, you know, just like you, we are hearing reports of widespread damage in the Pensacola and Fort Walton Beach areas, but it's real hard to confirm those reports of serious structural damage for a couple of reasons. For one, Opal is still pounding away there on the coast, and for another, there's not a lot of people to check on the damage tonight. Most have evacuated, gone on to higher ground. In Port St. Joe tonight, the word has gone out. Everyone get out a mandatory evacuation order. We have no shelters in Guff County. We made it a mandatory evacuation for basically the entire county. So most people are going towards uh, Tallahassee or towards Perry. Coastal highways already taking a pounding from Opal have closed due to high winds. For some, it is making the escape difficult. And there was so much traffic and we thought, well, if we keep coming this way, that we'll eventually be able to get north. Sorry. Gulf Coast residents finished boarding up their homes and tying down their boats this afternoon. You think this boat will make it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. One boat back. Get some footage of how not to tie up a boat. See it heaving? It's about to throw up. <laughs> tonight, garbage cans are blowing down city streets. Here in Port St. Joe tonight, some streets are underwater, and there is a countywide curfew. So those people who have decided to ride out this storm are staying inside their homes, looking for shelter in a room without windows. I have a hallway that has absolutely no windows in it, and we're going to pull the mattresses off the bed, and we're going to stay there. With the dogs, water, two radios, marine radio, phone, we'll be all right. Some of those people might be having second thoughts about that decision at this hour, this storm so powerful, so large. You know, we moved 50 miles inland so we could stay on the air with you. And even this far inland, we've seen some tree branches blow down tonight. We've seen some power lines knocked down and uh, the power is out in this area. So even this far inland, they are still feeling the effects of Opal. Live in the Panhandle, I'm Ed Trosky for the 10 o'clock news. Back to you. Ed, uh, you have covered more of these storms than about any reporter I know. From what you have seen with your own eyes and from what you have heard, put to Opal in perspective. Well, I think the surprising thing about this is how, how large it is, how wide it is. You know, in Hurricane Andrew down in South Florida, we saw a lot of damage, but that was concentrated damage. The path only about the, the path of serious damage only about 20, 25 miles wide. We are hearing reports on this storm's path of damage, 50 miles, perhaps 100 miles wide. And I think that's the difference in this, in this storm. Ed Trotsky in the Panhandle, thank you. Well, at last report, 15,000 are in shelters around the Florida Panhandle tonight, and several of those shelters are reporting food shortages at this point. And our complete coverage continues now as we bring in 10 o'clock news reporter Nicole Smith, who is live in the Panhandle. Nicole? Well, bud, things here, except for our light that we're using, things here in Bluntstown in the Panhandle are very dark indeed. Now, Bluntstown, Florida is about minutes west of Tallahassee, about 50 miles north of the coast. Now, I say things are dark because here in Bluntstown, emergency management has asked that the power be shut down. This happened about an hour ago because power lines, there's just too many of them down. As you can see here in the shelter, they're on emergency lighting. They're not sure exactly how long that is going to last. There's, there's about 200 people in this shelter here at Bluntstown High School. Let's go ahead and take a look at what it looked like here earlier this evening. When was the last time you saw a McDonald's closed at the dinner hour? 
Anticipation of Opal's arrival virtually shut down all of Blountstown in rural Calhoun County. But this small town 50 miles north of Port St. Joe became the destination for folks heading inland. I mean, it was just inch, bumper to bumper, inching along. So, it, and there was times where we just had to stop. I'm trying to get my family and my kin peoples and everything, my grandparents and everything out. It's really rough in Port St. Joe. Well, I was trying to get to Tallahassee. I came from Panama City, uh, but the weather's just too bad and the traffic is horrendous. So I decided to stop here, but I can't get in the shelter. So I'm going to stay in the car with the dogs. Late this afternoon, Bluntstown High School was filling fast with people hoping to get through the night and then get back home. Well, my daughter's expecting a baby and she didn't want to stay home. Me, I would have stayed home. We just go see what happens. We go ride it out. Yeah, that number has probably grown to many more, and they are experiencing shortages of food and blankets. They are expecting help from the state, but they say that usually takes a little bit of time. Reporting live in Bluntstown, I'm Nicole Smith. Back to you. All right, we're going to cut you loose here, Nicole. I have a lot of questions, but we're having some problems because of the storm with the transmission, so uh, we'll let you get back to work there reporting on the situation in the panhandle. Thank you. We can tell you that Opal isn't just hammering Florida tonight. This is how it looked in Gulf Shores, Alabama. That is right on the Gulf Coast. The storm is washing out seawalls there, blowing roofs off buildings and flooding streets. Earlier today, those same streets were filled with cars trying to get away from the coast. And even with the heavy rain and the drenching rain, the wind, investigators blamed the hurricane for this fire at a Pensacola bar. Flames destroyed the bar just a short time before the worst of the storm hit town. Nobody was hurt. Well, meteorologist Pamela Brady, as always, has been on the track of this storm, been following it closely all day for us, and joins us now with the very latest on where Opal is at this hour. Pamela? Well, Bud, right now, Opal is about 70 miles to the south of Montgomery, Alabama, and you can see it is well on shore. Let me take you back from this afternoon. It moved on shore just to the east of Pensacola at about uh, 6.15 tonight. We talked about the fact they had wind gusts at 144 miles an hour. Here are the latest coordinates if you're plotting along with us. And even this far inland, the maximum sustained winds right now are still at 100 miles an hour. The feeder bands are right now affecting central Florida. As you can see, all of this activity is moving through the area, moving north tonight at about 40 to 45 miles an hour. And of course, and very important for us, a tornado watch in effect for all of central Florida until 1 o'clock tomorrow morning. We'll talk lots more about the hurricane and have our local forecast coming up later on in the show. Back to you, bud. All right, Pamela, we'll look forward to that. Now, more than 700 National Guard reserves are on the move tonight. They are heading to the Panhandle to help with the aftermath of this hurricane. And we continue our complete coverage now with 10 o'clock news reporter Trace Gallagher and that part of the story. Some spent the night trimming down. Who knows when they're going to be able to get their next haircut. Most spent the night packing up. Well, they said pack for five days. But it could easily be five weeks. Just ask the veterans of Hurricane Andrew. I would say we still have 50% of the company here today that was here for that hurricane. So that helps out because those guys know somewhat what to expect when we get there and what needs to be done. But what about the other 50%? But the truth is you have no idea what to expect up there, do you, Scott? Not, not at all. Uh, there's, there's nothing really that can prepare you for what you're about to see over there. And it's the unknown that makes it hard to say goodbye, especially for newlyweds. It could just be a few days. Yeah, but still, he's going to be away, so it's, I don't know, I just... <laughs> you just hate it? Yes. But by daybreak, this company will be in the panhandle and on the scene of the devastation. That's when they'll find out how long this trip will really be. In Orlando, Trace Gallagher for the 10 o'clock news. And a reminder, you can get instant updates on the hurricane 24 hours a day. Just call our toll-free storm hotline at 1-800-572-4869 for the very latest. And for continuing coverage of Hurricane Opal, stay with the 10 o'clock news and Channel 6 news for updates on the effects of this powerful storm. Coming your way as the 10 o'clock news continues, a Simpson trial juror explains the not guilty verdict. Find out why she didn't buy the prosecution's case. And as if this weren't a tough enough week in California, wildfires now ripping through one part of that state will tell you about the damage they are leaving in their path. You're watching the 10 o'clock news from WCBX TV Channel 6 on WKCF TV 18. The 10 o'clock news is brought to you in part by Best Buy.
I see the world's biggest guitar. I see me mum. I see a mystical land filled with compact discs. Righto, let's go. Amazing, CDs everywhere. So many for so little. Under ten dollars, it boggles the mind. Look what he snagged. It's Mariah Carey's new CD, Daydream. So it is. I'm delirious. I'm in ecstasy. I'm in love. Some places are known for great music. Hi, I'm Paige of Jimmy Bryan Toyota, and right now the 96s are here and they're already sale priced. Take a look at these beautiful 96 Corollas equipped with automatic and air, just $13,966 or just $189 a month, and we have 17 of these to choose from. Hey, if credit's a problem, remember, at Jimmy Bryan Toyota, we guarantee 100% credit for approval. So come by and see us at Highway 436 in Winter Park, or give us a call at 1-800-NEW-TOYOTA. That's Jimmy Bryan Toyota. The boss had to pick the hottest day of the year to come over for dinner. Oh, what a fix we're in! Don't worry, I'll call American Air and Heat. American Air and Heat has been serving Central Florida since 1986 and offers a free service call with any repair. We will get you out of the fix you're in because we offer quality service on all makes and models and feature the reliable and dependable line of carrier equipment. American Air and Heat. When problems begin, we'll get you out of the fix you're in. When I'm in my Jimmy, nothing gets in my way. Of course, I've got Jimmy's available four-wheel drive anti-lock brakes and premium smooth suspension. Yeah, when I'm in my Jimmy, I'm in complete control. It's when I get out that I begin to panic. GMC Jimmy, thousands less than comparably equipped Jeep Grand Cherokee or Ford Explorer. See your Central Florida GMC truck dealer today. The following message is for those people who think the media glamorizes crime. Please, don't move! Please! Stop! Okay. Cops, where the good guys always win. Have you ever been photographed by Mr. Silas? The ratings pressure is on. Any chance of number one? Martin Sheen, news at 11. Saturday at 4. Proof tonight of how the O.J. Simpson trial gripped this nation. When the verdicts were read Tuesday, 91% of the TVs in use were tuned to O.J. Now that is the highest percentage in history, eclipsing even President Kennedy's death and the Apollo 11 moon landing. Today, Simpson juror Brenda Moran explained the not guilty verdicts, saying prosecutors left too many unanswered questions. And she thinks the bloody glove found by Detective Furman at O.J.'s home wasn't legit. Why was there so much blood on that glove and not a drip of blood on the ground anywhere around in that back way? All right. So do you With respect. Do you believe it was planted? Somebody planted it. Moran called the prosecution's focus on domestic violence, quote, a waste of time. The former head of security at Patrick Air Force Base faced some of his accusers today at his general court martial. Lieutenant Colonel Raymond Kerr is charged with sexually assaulting three women. One alleged victim broke into tears on the witness stand as Kerr's military defense lawyer indirectly accused the woman of making up the charges. If found guilty, Kerr could face dismissal from the Air Force, fines, and 18 and a half years behind bars. Pope John Paul attends a prayer service in Newark, New Jersey tonight. Many of the 1,800 people at the city's Sacred Heart Cathedral strain to touch the pontiff. Among those in the congregation, President and Mrs. Clinton, during the service, the Pope thanked those who have devoted their lives to religious service. An expressway collapse abroad looks a lot like a Florida sinkhole. Take a look. This happened in Taiwan. The road under construction caved in today, leaving a huge hole and engulfing five cars. But just one minor injury. No word yet on why it collapsed. Wildfires in Northern California are moving fast, burning thousands of acres. The flames have destroyed at least 40 houses and forced hundreds of people out of their homes. Firefighters say the good news is the flames appear headed toward the ocean. And still ahead for you on the 10 o'clock news, it is a storm that is not finished yet by a long shot. Find out where Hurricane Opal is headed next and how it could affect our weather. Right now in Orlando, some showers and some storms and a tornado watch in effect until 1 a.m. Pamela has all the weather here right after this break.